Welcome back to the sweatshop. Today we're going to be replacing a wheel bearing on this 2010 Nissan Rogue. Step one is to get it up in the air, make sure you have the vehicle secure, and then remove your wheel. Once your wheel is removed, your next step is going to be to remove the cotter pin. Once you remove the cotter pin, you get a axle nut. I think it's a 30 mil for this and knock it off. Knock it off. Remove it. Best tool to remove the cotter pin is a vice grip. It is not a 30 mil, it is a 32. Next step is to remove the caliper and rotor. The easiest way to do this is by first depressing the caliper just a bit. So take a flat screwdriver and stick it between the rotor and the caliper and just pry gently towards the outside of the vehicle. Once you get the caliper to release just a little bit, you're going to take your 19mm flex socket and get those two bolts off. Now with your caliper detached from the spindle, you're going to take a bungee cord and hook it through the middle of the caliper to support it and then just loop it through the spring on the vehicle and then just secure it to anywhere where it won't fall off and knock you in the head. With your caliper out of the way, remove the bolt and the rotor. Your next step is going to be to get this bull joint bolt off and then release the lower control arm. This is an aftermarket joint. I'm not sure if the stock size is 18 or 19, but in this case, it's an 18 for me. I was running the bolt freely just so I could get some of the rust and crud that's binding the bolt up inside of the spindle ground away. And now we're going to use a hammer just to tap it. There you go. There's your result. That's the crud that was holding it. So be sure to grind that up before you put it in. Now your next step is going to be to try and see if this will separate. If it's not going to separate, what we'll have to do is drive a wedge between the spindle where the bow joint is to get it to separate. Get a big pry bar. Next step, because we can't get it to separate nicely, is to take a wedge like this and drive it in between the opening on the control arm. Turn the wheel just a bit so you can expose the slotted portion of the spindle. That way you can get the wedge in there a bit easier. Remember the goal is not to spread the joint till you break it. You just want to get it in there a little bit to take some of the pressure off of the ball joint. What you can do if you're having quite a horrible time trying to get it out is put a small socket between the spindle and the CV shaft and then you can pry down on it and that should get it to go. Currently I have a 13 mil 38 socket shallow. It's an impact genius if you want to be exact. And there you go. You can see it's starting to separate there. If the socket won't go down into the hole, just get another socket that will. Oh crap. Don't get your socket stuck into the spindle. Get a smaller one. We'll go with an 11 mil. That doesn't do too much work around here. And then just slowly work it out of there, man. Once it feels relatively loose, it should come out with really no effort. Ah, there we go. What I'm doing with my right hand is I'm pushing the spindle toward the vehicle. That way the angle is just right. So when I'm prying it, it's not arcing or bending the joint in the spindle. That way you won't damage the spindle or the bull joint. Now your goal is to move the CV shaft out of the spindle. So easiest way to do that is to give yourself a little bit more room. Go over to the passenger side or to the steering wheel and turn the wheel to the passenger side. By turning it to the right, you will give yourself a little bit more room and you can pull the CV shaft out. Oh, there we go. Your bearing is exposed. 
The best thing you can do is to verify that you made the right decision in replacing this bearing. I think we're making the right decision. The next step is to get the ABS sensor off. In order to do so, you'll have to get this bolt out. Uh, if you live in the rust belt like me, most of the bolts on your vehicle will look like this. In order to work with those bolts, an impact driver can be your best friend. Attach the appropriate socket and smash away. Now we have the wonderful job of removing this ABS sensor. We have to do this quite carefully and take our time because we want to get this out of here, but there is a high chance that we won't be able to given how much rust is on this particular spindle. So essentially what we're going to do is take a vice grip or a little, you know, anything that we can do to get this thing to free up. And then we're going to wiggle it back and forth nice and slowly until we get it out. Now this process can take quite a while and you pray to God while you do it that you don't screw up the sensor because if you do, you'll be replacing it. Unfortunately, the rust tight has won this war. I cannot release it and the stupid thing is busted. So we're screwed. We're going to have to get a ABS sensor tomorrow and resume. Until then, good night. Okay, so it is the next morning. Our ABS sensor let us down last night and now we're going to just hammer this bearing out. We're waiting for the new ABS sensor to come in and then we'll commence with replacing it. In the meantime though, because this ABS sensor is trash, we don't have to care about destroying it any farther. So let's go ahead and get that bearing out. What we'll need is a 17 millimeter flex socket in order to get those four bolts out. One, two, three, and four. Let's do it. Now with the four bolts removed, you're going to have to get a big hammer and smash the bearing out. Basically you want to push it out that way so that it will fall off of the car. What really aids in this process is getting a long bar like this. This is an old CV axle. And then a really big hammer like this. It will be much easier for you guys at home because you won't have a camera in the way. But this is the process right here. And that, my friends, is how you smash it out of place. Now, of course, on video, it will look like it took me about two minutes to do. You will find out at home that rust tight is a, an opponent that is a pain in the ass and it makes your life extremely hard. So with the bearing out, the next step is to get rid of all that rust tight, not on the bearing, but in the hole right there. You can use sandpaper, a grinding disc, whatever. All you need to do is clean up the surface and then douse it with a bit of anti-seize just to make sure. If you have a bit more time, a little bit of uh, high heat paint will uh, do the job or just a film of grease so it doesn't rust. And then we'll be ready to put that bearing in. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember, protection is the key to success in a long life. Let's go ahead and smash this ABS sensor out. I gotta get a punch to smash that through. Oh, come on, man. Looks like it's become one with the fucking spindle. Oh, we might need to drill it out. We'll see. Let's try the valve spring tool. See what happens. Like holy fuck man, there was no way I was gonna get that thing out of there. Not a fucking chance. Wow, that's unbelievable. Back to our normal size punch. Fuck off, man. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, there's not a chance I was getting that EBS sensor out of there. Let's commence with cleaning. The goal with this is not to take off material, it's just to take off the rust. So be gentle. Once you take off most of the scale and rust, what you want to do is just sand it clean with a with a wire wheel or 
sounding drum like this. And now all that's left to do is to clean the mating surface. You want to make sure that it's flat. The best tool to do that is this. Our next step here is going to be to clean the mating surface for the ABS sensor and then we're going to ream the hole here just to make sure that it is nice and freely open so that we can stick the new one in there without having an issue. Grind this flat here and then get the appropriate size drill bit. Like I got the first one right out of the box. Good job, Jimmy. In case you're wondering, it is a 3/8 for my particular application. Let's step it up just a bit. We have a 25/64 drill bit. Let's see how that fits in there. So far, all we're taking out is just crap material, so we can still possibly go up a bit more. It'd be nice if I had a battery that wasn't dead. I think that's sufficient. So the final drill bit was a 13-30 second. Once you blow the area nice and clean, let the dust settle and then come back and either coat this with some anti-seize grease, whatever you want. You can either paint, you can paint it as well, but you want to put a thin film of paint, nothing really too thick because then you'll have clearance issues. And then start the reassembly process. Yeah, see, not so bad. It may be a bit hard to see, but I did give it a light coat of paint because the metal is so porous. Next thing we're gonna do is let it dry. Once it dries, we'll put a thin coat of grease on the uh, bearing, just on the seat, here I'll show you. We're gonna put a really thin layer of grease right here, right there on that portion of the bearing. We're not trying to get any grease over here just on that lip so that there's less chance of it rusting into place if we ever do have to replace this again. Uh, you also don't want to, you know, really put too much of it on because if you get grease in excess here, what will happen is it'll trap the rust particles that it does collect and it'll help the bearing fail prematurely. While waiting for our paint to dry, we had a surprise. Our ABS sensor came and we pulled off the old one just to compare it to make sure it is the same exact length. In this case, we're pretty lucky, it is. So now we can put that bearing in. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but there is a very thin layer of grease there on that portion of the bearing. The grease that you see between the ABS ring and the actual bearing is what the manufacturer has put in for this particular bearing. So do not get any grease in that area, just on the lip. I've taken the excess grease that was left on my finger and smeared it around the hole. Now what you want to do is place your bearing into the hole. Try your best not to scratch the paint and make sure that it fits. Then, don't forget your brake shield. It's also a very common mistake that happens. Make sure that you've also cleaned this up if need be. In this particular case, we are lucky. This one seems to be in fairly decent shape. Make sure it is situated the correct way. This is the cutoff for the brake caliper. And if you remember earlier in the video when we took it off, the brake caliper was on the front side here. So, don't forget it. Now it's currently in the way. So let's get that guy out there. Place this in here like that. Get your bearing in there and get one of those bolts just to secure it. Now, take the other three bolts, anti-seize them, and then you can put them in. 
Your bolts should look like that before you put them in. Nice and anti-seized. I think that's a word. If it's not, it is a word now. Then just take out that first bolt that you put in and put some anti-seize on her. And then torque it to the appropriate torque spec. Run them up with a gun. And then torque it. The correct torque spec for this particular application is 65 foot-pounds. Success. Your next step is to anti-seize anything that you have touched. So essentially you want to anti-seize the spine section of the CV shaft and the bull joint so that they slide in easily. I like to put a little bit just on my ABS sensor to make sure that we don't have the issue again in case we do have to replace it for whatever reason. And then take your ABS sensor, slide it in to test fit that it fits appropriately and correctly. Once you do that, you can go ahead and start to reassemble everything. To this point, I have installed my ABS sensor. We're going to be replacing the bolt because this guy here is completely rotted. Now with everything sitting like this, go ahead and adjust your wheel on the other side. What I did on the other side is just, I lined up the wheel in a straight position. So that's what you should do and now you can work your bowl joint in. Now just get a mallet and tap it home. If it's overly tight, you can wedge the spindle here just to get a little bit more clearance. Don't forget to clean up your bolt. Once clean, don't forget to anti-seize it. Once anti-seized, shove it in the hole. Torque it to the appropriate torque spec. 46 is the appropriate torque spec for my application. And now you can install your rotor. Don't forget to put some white lithium grease or anti-seize on the hub. And now the caliper, unhook your bungee cord. Before you bolt up your caliper, make sure that your brake hose is in the right position. Always thread in the bolts by hand. Make sure you use a torque wrench and torque yours to the appropriate spec. Next step, axle nut. Make sure you torque it to the appropriate torque spec. Get an enormous cotter pin and bend her through, bud. Okay. Now, give it a nice coat of white lithium grease or anti-seize, whatever you choose, my friend. For proper application, shake well. And your last and final step is to put the wheel back onto the vehicle. Be sure to torque it to the appropriate torque spec. I believe it is 80 foot pounds, but I usually torque most of these passenger wheels to 90 or 100. Whoa! That is always dangerous and can be a real dangerous situation. That you get stuck with that, and it's a good cut and a lot of pain. So. After the near-death experience, go ahead and finish it up with a new bit. Don't forget to torque it, and that's it, you're done! Well, that's all she wrote for the Nissan, boys and girls. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. We will see you in the next one.
Once your wheel is removed, your next step is going to be to remove this counter pin. Counter pin, Jesus, Jim. Once your wheel is removed, your next step is going to be to remove the counter pin. Counter pin? It's a counter pin. What the fuck's wrong with you? Now with your caliper dislodged from the... Now with your caliper detached from the bracket, from the... What the fuck am I saying? Now with your caliper... Now with your caliper bracket... Aw, oh, fuck you, car. Fucking Nissan. Turn the wheel just a bit of... A bit of bit. Genius, Jim. And try not to lose your air hammer in the process. Found it. Come on, let her loose. What's your problem, dog? Well, that didn't work, Jim. Come on, CB shaft, get the fuck out of here. Oh, Jesus. What? Okay, you know what? I promise I do this for a living. I think we're right. Fuck. With a stupid design from Nissan, we are now replacing a ABS sensor for no goddamn reason. Well, those came out decently. And then a big... Who put the camera there, damn it? You will find out at home that rice... So our next step here... Steph, you can go ahead and let the desk... Desk. Oh, fuck off. This is a pain in the dick to do, my friends. Give me back my socket, you rusty pile of shit. Oh, fucking cock sucky. Oh, okay. You still wanna get my fucking socket, bitch? Oh, okay. Fuck. Can breathe. 46 is the appropriate tour spec. 46 is the utop utopiate? <laughs> oh. Make sure your pads are in place properly. Jim? I have missed gigabytes left. I'm trying to do this quickly. The quicker I try to go, the slower I get. I don't know how that works, but it works for me. Well, that's all she wrote for the Nissan, boys and girls. All you got to do now is take it for a test drive and make sure you fix the right bearing. If you didn't, well, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow along for more tips and tricks on how to fix your vehicle properly. We will see you in the next one.